What is something that you want people to know about Ukraine? We are not Russians. Sometimes people were really shocked by the fact that uh, we are used to have a great life. We are used to uh, feeling free, not oppressed. My name is Maria, I'm 21 years old. I'm originally from Kyiv, Ukraine. Now I'm living in Brussels, Belgium, because of the war in my country. My name is Maxim, I live in Kyiv, I'm 23 years old. I'm a trainer and a psychologist of plowing. Welcome to Ukraine. This is Kyiv, its capital, moments after Russian President Vladimir Putin launched a full-scale invasion of the country. On February 24th, 2022, Russian troops invaded Ukraine by land, air and sea in one of the largest attacks on a European country since World War II. In the middle of Thursday night, missiles rained down on Kyiv. Russia overnight launched its long-anticipated attack on Ukraine. The Ukrainians woke up to find themselves plunged into the midst of war. It was unprovoked. But this is what Russian President Vladimir Putin unleashed on Ukraine. As the sun came up this morning... I was able to get out of two attacks. At 5 in the morning, I also took my father. I said, Maxim, I love you. I love you very much. Please come back home. And I went. So he went to protect us. Before that, we met with my father for half a year. I didn't hear any bombing, I didn't hear any bombing, nothing, because I used to have quite good sleep before. So I didn't hear anything. I didn't believe it at first. I, I thought it was a joke. And I remember it was like in the movies, when you come to the living room, you see everybody sitting on the couch and you look at the TV and you see like different parts of your country, I mean, being bombed, shelled, and you're just standing and you don't understand what's happening. The student of the university of Kino said that, friends, you are all for yourself. Тому робіться, що хочете. Ми якраз під час спочатку ми почали готуватися, підготували умовне бомбосховище зі студентами. Просто намагались по максимуму робити все, що є можливо в наших руках, а також ну якось виживати. Якраз змінилося все до коріна, тому що після 24 лютого майбутнього і планів на майбутнього вже не стало. Просто вже нічого не буду. Живеш просто одним днем. От зараз я живу одним днем. In the first year of the invasion, more than 13 million Ukrainians were uprooted from their homes, including 5 million who were internally displaced and 8 million who fled elsewhere in Europe. Maria left three months after the start of the war. The main thing that changed my mind and the final decision was made because I couldn't. I came to the point that anymore it, it was not possible for me. I was just uh, constantly anxious. I couldn't eat. I think I lost five or six kilograms in the first week on the war and I, I didn't get them till today. The Sometimes I needed to go shower myself. I received the notification. I quickly put something on my head and I just go somewhere to hide. So I slept in the corridors because I was too scared. В сім'я в цілому вони обговорили відїзд. Ми розуміли прекрасно, що наша сім'я буде перша йти ну, під обстріл, тому що у нас батько військовий. Але ще раз повторюсь, ми не виїхали, тому що багато там родичів по мамині лінії залишилися в Україні, і через це ми не хотіли залишати її. I'm thinking constantly about going back, staying here. What will I do with my life in a few years? Around 4.5 million Ukrainian refugees have returned home since the beginning of the war, which, however, is still far from over. Since February 2022, there have been a total of 500,000 military casualties on both sides. Ukraine has recaptured 54% of occupied territory. Russia still controls about 18% of the country. But why would Putin start this war in the first place? He repeatedly told the world he wants to keep Ukraine from joining NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, established after World War II as a military defense pact. Following the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, a number of countries that were formerly part of it joined NATO, moving its borders closer to Moscow. Together with Belarus and Georgia, Ukraine is now the last post-Soviet state left outside of the alliance. But that is not the only reason why Putin has Ukraine in his sights. The war started not the 24th February 2022, it started in 2014. 
Maria is talking about Moscow's annexation of Crimea. In 2014, Russian troops invaded the peninsula, part of Ukraine since its independence, and annexed it. Back in 2013, Ukraine reached an association agreement with the European Union. The then pro-Russian president, Viktor Yanukovych, refused to sign it, choosing closer strategic ties with Russia instead. Pro-European protesters flooded the streets of Kyiv, facing months of violent crackdown until Yanukovych was toppled and fled to Russia in 2014. But not everyone was happy about this. Many in the Russian-speaking East wanted Yanukovych to stay. In April of 2014, weeks after taking over Crimea, Putin started backing separatist forces against the Ukrainian army in the Donbas region. With the pretext of liberating those regions and denazifying Kyiv's democratic government, Putin invaded Ukraine in 2022. My whole life changed and uh, everybody changed. I'm not the same person anymore. I didn't switch off the notification about the air raids in Ukraine, in Kyiv at least. So every time you wake up, you could see 15 notifications that during the night they were bombing Kyiv. Ми можемо по ньому зараз дивитися, де в нас тривога. У нас зараз тривога по всьому, по всій Україні. Також ми по цій мапі можемо подивитися, де в нас найближче укриття. Я до цього спокійно відношусь, тому що якщо, як казав мій батько, Максим, якщо твоя ракета, то це твоя ракета. Вона в тебе в будь-якому випуску прилетить, і ти від неї не втечеш. Від долі не втечеш. Ну, я досі спокійно рвою. Докорінно все змінилося, тому що війна, як ніяк, вона просто знищує людей повністю, їхнє майбутнє. Їхнє життя, мені прийшлося адаптуватися до нових умов. До умов того, що є тривога, до умов того, що ракети, бомби, все поряд. І ти повинен жити в цьому і адаптуватися до цього дуже швидко. І дуже швидко реагувати. The figure skating is like uh, quite the linking point for me between Ukraine and Belgium, because uh, that's my hobby, I really enjoy doing it. I started at the age of four. It's something that keeps me awake and uh, brings me joy. So I really enjoy doing it even here. And I don't know, when I'm figure skating, I don't think about all the problems and difficulties that I am facing and my country is facing right now. My closest friends and my family is in Ukraine still. I still talk to everybody every night, every evening. So. I have, I have this connection with them and sometimes I understand that we're not on the same level because I'm not living the same things they're living now. Тут важко, тому що у мене більше моя частина, вона виїхала, друзі виїхали за кордон, хто по світу скрізь люди розкидані. Але звичайно, коли ти дивишся там історії, коли ти ти споглядаєш в Інстаграмі, як хтось відпочиває, хтось просто живе своє прекрасне життя, подорожує, а ти повинен просто сидіти як в клітці. Да, и бояться того, что там тебя могут убить. Another big part of Putin's rhetoric is that Ukraine and Russia are one people, a single whole. He exploits the theory that Ukrainians and Russians both draw their lineage from Kiev and Rus, a Slavic state founded in the 9th century with Kiev as its capital. A lot changed in the centuries that followed, as Ukraine was under Russian influence for most of it. The forced Russification of Ukraine began in the 18th century. By 1804, the Ukrainian language was banned. And in the early 1930s, Stalin orchestrated a famine in the country that resulted in the deaths of millions of Ukrainians. Following the dissolution of the USSR in 1991, Ukraine became an independent country. To this day, one in six Ukrainians is ethnically Russian and one in three speaks Russian as a native language. They don't have the same ideas. They're always living with a dictator. And we were raised as a free people. We always wanted to have our own identity, our own decisions. We were free and independent all our lives. When I was in Germany, in Munich, they asked me, where did I ask? I said, I'm from Ukraine. And they said, oh, Russians? I said, no, we are not Russians. І коли просто спілкуються з нами, кажуть, що ми там якийсь дружбний народ, дуже товаришуємо з росіянами, я такий, якби ні, ми дві різні країни, дві різні нації, це все. We really want to be separated from this past. And it's really important for us 
to make it clear to everybody. My generation feels completely European because we never had this uh, USSR mindset. We could see that actually we're moving towards something better. We understand that it is not possible for Ukraine to integrate the European Union or NATO right now. It is just impossible. We're aware of it. But I think that's the first step before uh, something better. Usagali, ja za pro ja pro europejskie ciennosti ja za nich i ja dużo chcę, żeby my stopili jest. We want to support Ukraine. It's a very powerful political signal. In December 2023, EU leaders decided to open accession negotiations with Ukraine. Since the beginning of the war, the European Union has allocated more than 143 million euros in humanitarian aid to support those affected by Russia's war on Ukraine. As of 2023, the Ukrainian army counted around 500,000 servicemen, 200,000 of which are active military personnel, a little more than a third of Russia's military personnel. For the moment, the mobilization age for Ukrainian men is 27. Я знаю прекрасно, що я не можу вбивати. Я, ну, я не знаю, як це взагалі, тому що навіть з батьком, коли спілкувався, він також нам казав: "Або ти, або тебе". Але я знаю, що я не зможу зробити так, ну, це не це не в мені. Це не в мені. Я більше, напевно, що зможу врятувати когось. Ну, дуй послуг психологічні, тому що я реабілітую багато дітей. Реабілітую uh, жінок, чоловіків, котрі повер... є і повернулися до небойових дій. І з... я вважаю, що я багато тут вже, вже не дай допомоги, тому що багато тримованих, багато людей з ПТСР, багато людей просто, ну, взагалі вони не бачать майбутнього ніяко. І ти намагаєшся просто дати цим людям позитив, дати їм щось хороше, якусь емоцію, просто хоч щось. The presidential election in Ukraine was scheduled to be held on March 31, 2024. However, martial law will not allow for democratic elections to take place, leaving President Volodymyr Zelensky in power indefinitely. People right now in Ukraine are really concentrated on the best scenario for our country. It's to come to the borders of uh, 1991, when Ukraine remained in, uh, independent from uh, the USSR. We're fighting for it, we're doing everything we can to take everything back, because it's our lands, our people. It was uh, illegally taken away. People are not even considering the fact that we can possibly lose. It is really challenging being a Ukrainian <laughs> right now, but I think it's a great opportunity for us, the younger generation, to stand for ourselves, to show that we need to change things. Хочеться побачити нарешті на вулиці посміхнених людей, котрі просто йдуть і не бояться дивитися в небо. Хочу, щоб нарешті над нашим небом почали літати літаки. Пасажирські. Просто пасажирські літаки. Хочеться не боятися, коли щось вбухає перед. Хочеться почути салют. Хочеться ось цього. Хочеться, щоб діти бігали і не боялися. Ми можемо побачити, що вони були щасливі з їхніми життями.